¿Estáis you preparadas? ¿Preparadas? Ready? Cinco, cuatro, Four, three, tres, two, dos, one. uno. Adelante, Good equipo. Luck. Suerte. Hi, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Okay, so today I've got the first of my World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship videos for you. I plan to do maybe three, I think, depending on how long they end up being. There is so much to say about this event. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. I had one of the best times of my life ever at this event. It was just so much fun, so great to be among people who love puzzles, you know, I don't have many people here where I live um, that love puzzles like I do. I don't tend to puzzle with people. My kids will occasionally be roped into it, but I was surrounded in Spain by people who all loved it as much as I do. And that was just so lovely. I met so many lovely people as well. Just everything about it was just brilliant, brilliant. I can't, I can't fault it at all. Right, so I'm not going to do, I don't have a, one of the recap videos for you today. I plan on doing possibly two of those um, separated into perhaps individual, uh, where I go over what happened in the individual category and then maybe a pairs and teams video uh, to cover all of that. And I'll go through my experiences and things as well in those videos. I'll do that a little bit in this video, but this video is more focused on the puzzles I brought home. So this is kind of a puzzle haul, but it's um, World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship specific. And it's also, I'm going to talk about the puzzles I took with me and the ones I didn't bring back and possibly will get since I've come back. I did put a community post up recently asking if anybody has specific questions about the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. Not necessarily with a view to doing a Q&A video, but more really just to organise my thoughts about all of the World Jigsaw Puzzle recaps because there was, like I said, just so many things that I had to say about it and I wanted to make sure I covered everybody's questions about it and thoughts. Some of those I will hopefully answer in this video as well, but of course you're free to ask questions in the comments. And I do encourage that. I'm happy to answer those as well. But thank you anyway for those who have left me questions. I've had lots and lots and lots. Some people who have asked me several questions, but that's all fine. I'm really, really pleased that you want to know all about it. And I will get to those as soon as I possibly can. So without rambling on too much, I'm going to do this sort of in order. And I'm going to start with the puzzles that I took with me to Spain. So... As most of you, I'm sure, will know by now, I'm just going to move these over a bit because I've got restricted arm room. As most of you will know by now, I met for the first time my fellow YouTube puzzlers, Jeanette from Jeanette and Her Puzzles, Juby from Jigsaw Juby, and Donna Louise from For the Love of Puzzles. We all decided at the beginning of the year that we were going to go to Spain and form a team, and we did that. And it was the first time I'd met them on Monday the 18th when I actually, well, when we all arrived in Spain. It was the first time we'd met, but that also means that we have never puzzled together before. So we needed to practice. We needed to practice puzzling together and possibly just practice individually just to keep that practice going um, in the lead up to the World Championships, which started on the Wednesday. So... <laughs> I took some puzzles with me. Now I've been doing a lot of practice at home and I had a bunch of puzzles that I had used and worked on and many of the puzzles that I had aren't as easy to get hold of in countries like New Zealand where Donna Louise lives and in countries like Slovenia where Jeanette lives and so I had puzzles that I was able to take with me and Donna Louise specifically suggesting that I brought along 
puzzles from the 2023 catalogue. Well, it turns out I had three of those and I also had two Circle of Colours puzzles, which we all wanted to have a go at because we thought that maybe one might come up at the championships. And we were right, as it turned out. There were two that came up at the championships, but I'll get to that. So these are the puzzles I took with me. First of all, I took the this one here. Now, up to now, I've been calling this the jellyfish puzzle. And the, the, the name on the side of the box of the puzzle is, I think, in German. And when I, when I typed into Google to translate what it says, it, it translates as colourful jellyfish. Now, um, another title I've seen for this is colourful underwater species, which I'm inclined to think it's probably more that than the jellyfish, because there are more than just jellyfish on this puzzle. But either way, it's colourful. And I took this with me. I had actually practiced this one twice. So I, I did this individually, not that long before I left for Spain. I was over the hour and a half mark. It was closer to two hours, but it's a tough puzzle, this one. And actually this ended up coming up in the pairs category, which makes more sense because I think to do this individually would be quite a tough undertaking, but it did come up in the pairs category. And in fact, it came up in mine and Juby's pairs category. <laughs> I think it was group C. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Um, but we were lucky, really. We were fortunate because we'd actually practiced this puzzle together as a pair on the Tuesday before the championship started. So I had actually, by the time it came to it, I'd actually done this puzzle twice and Juby had done it once and we'd puzzled it together as well. So we were quite well prepared, I think, with this one and I was really, really pleased that I took it with me. So that is the colourful underwater species. I'll let you know what happened with these puzzles once I've gone through the rest of them because actually this is just a lid. <laughs> there is no actual puzzle anymore. I ended up leaving it in Spain but I'll go through that as we go along. The other puzzle I took with me from the 2023 catalogue was this one. New York postcard. Now the reason I got this one initially was because of its similarity to the London postcard which was one of the 2022 individual category puzzles and I wanted to, I had done that and I wanted to do a puzzle that was comparative to it to see if different methods of doing it would improve my time and things like that without having to do the same puzzle again if that makes sense because obviously your time is likely to improve if you've done a puzzle before so that's why I got this one, but it turned out to be a 2023 puzzle and this is another one that came out in the competition. <laughs> You'll notice a wee theme going on here and a few people have mentioned this in my comments, but I actually, I actually took quite a lot of puzzles that ended up popping up in the competition. So again, I was extremely fortunate, but um, anyway, this one came up and this is one of the ones I took with me. Another one that I took with me is this one, An Evening in Pisa, this one is called, another 2023 catalogue one. I had done this before the actual competition started, I had actually done this puzzle three times. I did it once as a real-time build for my members only YouTube and my Patreon because I thought people might be interested to see really what I'm like puzzling in real time and you know what I do and how I kind of get myself through it and how what my thought process is and things like that. So if you are interested in watching that and you're not a member or a patron, then maybe go and have a look and see what you think. Um, and if you've already seen it, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> anyway, that turned out to be a really good thing to do because it actually taught me a lot about the way I was puzzling and some of the bad habits I'd gotten into and things like that. I have kind of gone over that in a previous video, but that was the first time I did it. I did it a second time when I was wanting to try and improve times and also try different methods and also eradicate some of the bad habits that I've discovered. And I actually improved my time by a good amount, by about 15 minutes or so. So I was pleased with that. So that was twice. And then I took this to Spain, obviously, and Juby and I did it as a pair. So I'd done this three times. So if this puzzle had come up in my category, because it's another one that came up in, I think, group D. I think this one came up in group D. If I'd had this puzzle, I would have been well prepared because I'd have done it three times up to that point. 
but alas it didn't come up for me in the individuals category but anyway that's one I took with me as well and the, there were two others I took with me and they were both circle of colours puzzles the two that I had were the donuts puzzle which I don't have a box lid for now or, or the puzzle itself I gave it to Donna Louise because she can't get the circle of colours puzzles in New Zealand so I said well that's fine you can take mine I don't mind um, I built them before obviously and that was all fine but anyway the donuts puzzle I took with me and I also took with me the ocean circle of colours <laughs> so what I'm really saying is that four out of the five puzzles that I took with me to the worlds ended up coming up in the competition now I promise I do not have psychic ability and I did not have any inside information on this I just happened to have quite a lucky hit rate with the puzzles that came up and the ones that I practiced and it, it, it was great and I actually did get to do a couple of them myself so this is one of the ones included in that this was the second semi-final puzzle they were both circle of colors puzzles the first one and the second semi-final but this is the one that came up in mine and I had actually done it before again twice <laughs> so I've done this individually and I actually did this one in about an hour and 25 minutes my times on the donut and on this one were almost exactly the same and it was nearing the hour and a half so qualifying but you know at the at the back end of kind of qualifying I also did this as a pair with Juby as well we did practice quite a lot of puzzles together and we practice puzzles as a team so there's a few people who have commented how close I was at you know predicting the puzzles that came up but really there was no prediction going on at all it was just I needed some puzzles to practice on I went on Amazon I typed in 500 piece Ravensburger puzzles and found a bunch that I really liked and bought them and did them and it just so happens I was rather lucky and <laughs> a lot of the ones that I bought and practiced ended up coming up so that was really brilliant but definitely definitely no real conscious predicting on my part just lucky really I guess I think I was just lucky if you are thinking that uh, I might have some good knowledge on what puzzles will come up next year then feel free <laughs> to do the same ones that I do but I can't guarantee that I'll be right so just a wee disclaimer there so they're the ones I took with me. Now, none of the ones I took with me, I brought back. First of all, with the Circle of Colours and the Jellyfish Puzzle, both of which I did at the competition, I ended up with two copies of them because I had the one I took with me and I had the one that I'd done in the competition. Juby already had the colourful underwater species puzzle, so um, she didn't need a copy of it. And to be honest, having done them like three times by that point, I just didn't feel like I necessarily needed to bring them back home with me. So other people took those. There was some, like Donna Louise and Jeanette took some, uh, but we had, whilst we were there, some kind of we puzzle swap type things going on, people giving away other puzzles, and we swapped about with people as well. So they are now elsewhere, but I've I've still got the box lids here because I took them to Spain with me in resealable bags to save on space because these boxes are quite bulky they take up a lot of space in the luggage and so what I ended up doing was I photocopied the image and I just took a bag with the pieces in and a photocopy of the image so I've got all these lids which I can demonstrate to you nicely but there is no um, puzzle to go with it so they're away now I took those with me that was well worth it but I don't have those any longer so that moves me on nicely to the puzzles that I actually did bring home now at the world championships you get to keep the puzzle that you actually end up building in any given category so I was group E in the individual preliminary rounds and my group E puzzle was this one here which I absolutely loved I really enjoyed this puzzle obviously not one I'd done before not one I'd taken with me but that was fine I, I <laughs> up to that point I was in group E so I was the second to last group to puzzle and I'd already seen the New York postcard come up I'd already seen the Pisa puzzle come up and I was thinking 
what are the chances that I would take so many with me that have come up but end up not getting one of them myself? <laughs> but that's still fine. Like, it was nice doing a different puzzle. And I didn't think the image was too daunting. When I saw it, I was like, oh, okay. You know, and I got on with it and I actually really enjoyed doing this puzzle. So I was really happy to bring this home with me and I would like to do it again at some point as well. The second one I will show you is this one here. This is called the Archaeologist's Desk. And this was the puzzle for the group C, preliminary individual round. So Jeanette actually built this puzzle. Now I haven't built this puzzle yet. I purchased this puzzle while I was there. So what happened was after each puzzle was revealed, after each round, they then were on sale at the back of the Millennium Dome. There was like a table laid out and each time a new puzzle was revealed that would then become available for sale. So when this one came out I really liked the look of it. It's kind of a colour gradient but it's very very busy this image um, but I just really liked it like the colours like the busyness of it like the subject matter it's an Amy Stewart artwork puzzle and I also love Amy Stewart I just recently did my first no my second Amy Stewart puzzle as a 4,000 piece bluebird puzzle and I really really loved that puzzle so I knew that I wanted this one but it didn't come up in my group so I, I bought it at the Millennium Dome and I brought this home with me as well the next puzzle I got again not one I did in the competition but one that came up this was the pairs category puzzle for group B in the preliminary rounds and it's called Ludicrous Library. And it's a Colin Thompson image. And again, Colin Thompson is another artist that I, I really like the images on the, the puzzles that he does the artwork for. There's a, there's a lot of large piece count puzzles that he does the artwork for. You've got Bizarre Town. You've got the Magical Bookcase, which is an 18,000 piece Ravensburger. I haven't done any of those or got any of those, but I really did want to try this. I really liked the look of the image. So this was another one I brought back with me that I haven't done yet, but I am going to do them uh, very soon. In fact, this one, the archaeologist desk, I want to build for you in this video today because I like it when I do videos where I talk about puzzles, but I also like to have actual puzzling going on in them as well. So I'll do a wee time lapse of this at the end probably time myself to see how I stack up against Jeanette. I'm not going to pressure myself too much, just going to enjoy the build as well. The next one I brought back with me is this one here. So this is a circle of colours and it's the one from the first semi-final round. So that's the semi-final round that Jeanette and Donna Louise and Juby were all in. They all got this, it's called Poke Bowl and it's basically a plate with lots of colourful food and it goes in kind of a gradient from the inside out. I really liked the look of this. I never got the opportunity to do it because I was in the second semi-final and I got the ocean one, which I'd done before. So I thought, well, it'd be nice to actually do a different circle of colours because I really do like the circle of colours series of puzzles. I think they're really, really pretty. So Donna Louise actually gave me her copy of this. She took my two circle of colours home that I took with me and she was um, very gracious and said that I could take this one because she knew that I didn't have it. So, and actually, uh, Donna Louise, I've just watched your first recap video and you seemed to have forgotten <laughs> what happened to this puzzle. You said something like, oh, for some reason I don't have this one. So um, I promise I didn't steal it. You did say I could have it. <laughs> So I have your circle of colours puzzled on Louise, do apologise. So I'm really pleased to get that one and I'm looking forward to giving this one a go as well. I'll probably speed run all of these in fairness. I mean this one was a pairs puzzle, the Ludicrous Library, but I'll still probably give it a go at speed puzzling. The other competition puzzle specifically that I brought back with me was this one here and this is one of the thousand piece puzzles from the team finals. So in the team final category, you get two puzzles. You don't get a choice about the puzzles. You just get two puzzles and you have to build both of them within three hours. This one was the one that we did second and I actually really enjoyed it. It's called Puzzle People. It's one that's unreleased because it was a finals puzzle. So this one isn't available to buy as yet, but I believe the puzzles from the championship specifically, the unreleased puzzles, will be going on sale soon, not long after the championship ended. I don't know when exactly, but there are a few actually that I would like to buy, 
when they come out that I didn't bring home with me. So, and I'll, but I'll go through that in a, in a little while. Ooh, the pieces are falling off. This is the bag of pieces. They're in a resealable bag. So now that brings me on to another two puzzles that I brought back with me that weren't involved in the championship directly as competitive puzzles. I'll start with this one. This one is a 2000 piece vertical panorama puzzle and it's called, I think it's just called Guinness World Records. Yes, it's called Guinness World Records. It's got the Wii World Records stamp on the side. The artwork is by Rod Hunt and it's basically a pictorial representation, I guess, of all the different Guinness World Records that have been broken. It is a very busy puzzle and I think there's probably quite a lot of records represented in here. It's quite, it's quite cartoonish, but it looks fun. And I was thankful to uh, bring this home. There was actually a record broken, one of two, at the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. And one of them involved this puzzle. So the world's records puzzle was built and the record that was broken was the fastest time to build the 2000 piece world records puzzle. There were eight people that built it. And the time, I believe, was one hour, 24 minutes and four seconds. So that's an incredible time for a 2000 piece puzzle and especially an image like this, which can't have been easy. <laughs> but I was really, really pleased to be able to get this puzzle. It was actually a gift from Alfonso, who's the uh, president of the World Jigsaw Puzzle Federation. He was an extremely welcoming and friendly man. And I would really like to say thank you to him for um, all the kindness that he showed us, for asking us to commentate and help out and be involved. It, it was really, really nice to be able to do that. And I really do appreciate this puzzle being gifted to me from him. So thank you for that, Alfonso. So that's that one. And the other one, which was again, another gift uh, from Alfonso is this one here now. This one is a special edition puzzle. It's a, the Ravensburger anniversary puzzle. And it says on the image, Ravensburger puzzle, it's got the logo uh, since 1891. You can see colorful jigsaw pieces scattered across, but what you might not be able to tell because it's quite small, but this is actually a photo mosaic. So again, the, the pictures that make up the mosaic are really, really tiny. But if you if you look closely enough, you can see it's a photo mosaic. So but the, the reason it's a special edition is because there were only a thousand of them, a thousand of them produced. So there aren't many of them looking around. Um, so I'm really, really privileged to have a copy of this puzzle. And again, I want to thank you so much, Alfonso, for that really kind gift. Now, Jeanette and Donna Louise also got a copy of this puzzle. We do have a plan for it, something collaborative that we want to do together on this involving speed puzzling, but I will tell you more about that nearer to the time we do it because it won't be till next year now. And we've got the Battle of the YouTube puzzlers coming up first. So really our focus at the moment collaboration wise is on that, but we do have plans for this puzzle to do it together as a collaboration and I will let you know more about that nearer to the time. But yes, yeah, so, so happy to have brought this puzzle home. The other one, which if you've seen my recent video, you'll already know by now, I brought back from Spain, is this one here. This is my unicorn puzzle, one of them that I finally managed to get hold of and I could not be happier that I now have this puzzle. It's the Lehena Vision 13,200 piece Clementoni puzzle and it's one of my dream puzzles. I just couldn't believe that I ended up bringing this home from Spain. It was just the most amazing thing and just another one of the highlights of the whole trip. But uh, as I say, I've recently done an unboxing video on this and I tell the story of how it came to pass that I ended up hauling it back to the UK on two flights. And actually that ties nicely into my next segment, I guess, of this video, which is puzzles that I would have liked to have brought back with me, but didn't. Um, and the reason it ties in nicely is because this is a lot of the reason I couldn't bring more puzzles back. <laughs> As you see, it's a large puzzle and it's heavy. It's just over seven kilograms and it took up quite a lot of my baggage space and allowance for the plane trip. So I had to be very careful about the weight of the puzzles I was putting in my case. Um, I had to use my hand luggage for quite a few of these puzzles as well. So 
What I did to accommodate that was I flattened a lot of the boxes so that I could put them flat in the case and it wasn't taking up as much space. Um, the puzzle pieces were in uh, resealable bags, a lot of which I carried in my hand luggage, so it was a bit of a juggle really. I still brought back a good amount of puzzles, really pleased with that, but just the fact that I had to bring this home with me meant that I could have perhaps brought more but just didn't end up being able to do that. So among the puzzles I would have liked to have brought back that I will buy eventually are the Pears Finals puzzle which is called Boston and it was a nightmare to speed run but I actually do like the image and would like to have a go at putting that together and actually finish it this time. So I would like to get that. It's not been released for sale yet and Juby took the copy that we did together which I was perfectly happy with. She liked the image as well so that was great that she got that puzzle but I would like to get that at some point. Some of the other ones that I would like to have brought back with me are the individuals puzzles from group A and group F. Now the group A puzzle was called Lupins and it's the one that Donna Louise did for her group. They're both nature edition puzzles and they both look quite difficult. The group F one is a panorama, it's called Summer Thunderstorm. Um, but the main reason I want to bring those, wanted to bring those back was because I wanted to just have a go at them and to see how I would have got on if I got that in my category. I was well pleased with the one I did get, but I just am curious really to see how I would have got on having built those. But the good thing about those is that they're already puzzles that are released and out there to buy, so I will probably get both of those puzzles fairly soon. There were a couple of team puzzles that I quite liked. In the first round of the team's competition, there was one called the 50s and it was like a collage of things from the 50s. I quite liked that puzzle uh, and I wasn't able to bring that back because you get, in the first round you get four puzzles to choose from and you have to pick two of them. And we didn't actually build it for the team's category but I liked it and but you don't, when it comes to taking them home, you don't all get a copy each. You just pick which one you want and you take it with you um, if you so desire. So I, I didn't bring any back from the team's first round, uh, but that one I did like. What are some of the other ones I really liked? Oh, uh, yes, there was a pairs uh, puzzle for the group A uh, called Student Days, which I quite liked and I would have liked to have had a go at that one as well. So there's just one or two from various elements of the competition that I either didn't get because they didn't come up in my round or I just didn't have space for them. You're probably wondering why I haven't shown you the individual's final puzzle yet. And that is because I didn't bring it home with me. Now, when I say home, I did bring it from Spain. Now for this one, I'm talking about the finals puzzle for the individual category and it's called, now then let me just remember what it's called because it's a, a name that's a little bit difficult to pronounce. I don't know if I will pronounce this right but it's called Marzumemi Sicily. I enjoyed that puzzle and I did bring it back from Spain to the UK but my journey home here to Scotland involved a pit stop in England uh, where my kids were staying with my parents. And while I was there, I was showing my parents all the puzzles I'd got from the competition. And um, when it came to the finals one, the Sicily one, my stepdad said, now, I really like that one. And I was like, oh, do you? And he said, yes. And I said, OK. And I kind of went away and thought about it. And I thought, well, to be honest, I'm quite happy for him to have that puzzle. And I left it with him as a gift because my parents had done so much for me to help and support me going to this competition. They looked after my kids for a week and a half. They had me for a couple of days on either side of the trip. They gave us a lift to and from the train station. because We got the train to and from uh, Scotland. So I wanted him to have it. Not only that, but he really seemed to like and appreciate the image. And whilst I do like the image, it's not really my cup of tea as a general rule. So what I ended up doing was I actually built the puzzle again while I was in England and then once I'd done that I said right I would really like you to have this so I left that with him and eventually again might buy it not sure we'll see what happens I've built it twice now so I don't kind of feel this strong need to 
redo it necessarily, but that is why I don't have that puzzle. It came back from Spain, but it did not come back with me to Scotland. Now there's just two more puzzles I want to mention here, and that is these two here. And the reason I'm mentioning these in this video is that they are sort of part of the puzzle haul from the trip overall. So as I just mentioned, I took a pit stop in England on my way back up to Scotland and what had actually happened at the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships is I met a very, very nice lady called Annika who is from the UK and she wanted to start a Jigsaw Puzzle Association for the UK, for Great Britain. And she chatted to me about it and to some of the other British participants in the competition and we were all for that because whilst there are speed puzzling competitions here, there aren't that many and we don't have a Jigsaw Puzzle Association here. So I was all for that. And as part of this, she has actually started up an Instagram and a Facebook page called the Great British Jigsaw Puzzle Association. So I just, I'm going to leave links in the description below to their Instagram and their Facebook. And I would encourage you, if you're from the UK and you'd really like to do more speed puzzling to, and support speed puzzling in the UK, then I encourage you to go and join the page and join the, follow the Instagram and get involved with that because it'd be great if we could grow that into something here in the UK. So how this links in with these puzzles is that in the course of kind of discussing that with Annika and things like that, she has asked me if I can think of good um, British brands that we could possibly use in speed puzzling competitions, ones that I've maybe already reviewed, ones that I maybe just know about that might be good for that. And I said, well, I know that Gibson's is used for the British Championship. However, aside from a, a small Gibson's puzzle that came in the shape of a Christmas bauble and it was a Christmas puzzle, aside from that, I've not done any Gibson's puzzles of any particular size. With this in mind, I resolved that I was going to do some shopping in England. Uh, the town that my, my parents stay in is significantly bigger than here and they have lots more shops with puzzles in and I knew that they would be well stocked with Gibson's puzzles. So I went and I bought two Gibson's puzzles with a view to trying them out and seeing what they're like. I have heard good things about Gibson's so I really hope I'm going to enjoy these puzzles but I got, first of all, I got this one here. This one's called Into the Forest. And this is probably one I'll do in December because although it's not directly a Christmas puzzle, it does have a wintry theme. It's kind of a, an evergreen forest. There's some pine trees. You've got lots of reindeer. There's snowflakes coming down and all this wildlife. Again, busy image. It's a vertical puzzle, um, but it's so pretty. And I just instantly, I loved it as soon as I saw it. So I thought that'd be a really nice puzzle to do in December and try out the Gibson's brand. And the other puzzle I got was this one. This, I don't know, I might come to regret this. We'll see what, what happens, but this is called the London Tube Map. It, it's a map of the London Underground, basically. So you've got all the tube stations and everything going on there uh, from London. And I had seen this before, and I think it, <laughs> much as I think it might be quite difficult, I also think it looks really fun. <laughs> and it's quite iconic of, Britishness, I suppose, the London Tube map. So I thought, right, I'm going to get that. Um, and I'm going to build this as well and uh, see how I get on with it. So these are the two I brought back with me from England, specifically, on my way back uh, home from Spain. So that's all the puzzles I have for you in this haul. I really hope you've enjoyed that overview of the puzzles I took with me, the ones I brought back, um, and the ones I wish I'd have brought back. Again, watch this space for further puzzles that I do end up buying that were in the competition. I will I will be buying some of them and I will be doing some of them, particularly the ones I haven't done before. Before I close off with the time lapse of the archaeologist's desk, which I mentioned earlier on, I just want to mention that I will be putting links in the description below to all of these puzzles that are available to buy just now. I will be putting links in for the puzzles on the both the American, the, the US Amazon and the, the .co.uk Amazon. And so if you like any of these puzzles and you would love to try them yourself, 
and want to give them a go then please do consider using those links to buy the puzzles if you enjoy shopping at amazon that is obviously don't feel obligated to get them from there if you don't want to but what happens with that is that you don't pay any more for them than the retail price but uh, I do get a commission from the sale if you use the links in order to buy them and that money all goes back into the channel. But I'll leave it there and I will move on now to a time lapse of the archaeologist's desk and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> 